Hey, Johnny Vanderford here with Lorraine County Community College and the MEMS and Microelectronic Manufacturing Program, as well as Merit Manufacturing Electronics and Rework Institute for Training. And some of the students and trainees that we've been working with have actually been working on an interesting problem, recognition of really, really bright parts in the pick and play system. So pick and place has the ability to do a lot of things. Its primary thing that it does is it picks up components and places them down onto the board. But it has the ability to recognize via a visual inspection system defects on these potential parts that would we wouldn't want to have placed onto our board. We want that part discarded or if it's in the wrong polarity, put it back into the uh, feeder which I just loaded onto the machine there. And one of these parts that um, in particular the senior design students were recently working with is, let me show the screen right here, a crystal oscillator. So this oscillator that's actually being shown on the screen right now um, is extremely bright metal on the top part of it here. And on the bottom is white ceramic with three um, metal uh, pads that are on it. So what I'm gonna do first is I am actually going to try and pick up this component. First, I need to teach where it's actually located. So let's uh, move this forward just a little bit here. So we'll pick it up in the center part of it there. Manually set it to pick up in the center of the pocket for this. And we've just picked up one of these components. So what you're looking at right now, what you are looking at right now, and this goes for many, many different picking places, is you are looking at a top-down view of this part. I'm actually going to turn off the servo switch and open this up. So the top down view of the part comes from the head that's at the part of this here. This is the part that rasters all the way across with uh, where this part happens to be. Um, however, if I move this kind of out of the way here and show you a little bit of what's on the inside of the pick and place, you'll notice that there is a additionally sophisticated camera system that's actually located right in this part down over here that actually looks up at the bottom of the part. And this is the camera that does a lot of the work in terms of the picking and placement uh, for where the component's actually going to go. A top-down camera is more or less more of a programming tool that allows us to program where the part is in the feeder, whereas the bottom camera figures out where are the pads, where's the component body, and makes the final decisions based on where it observes those as to where it places the component down. So let's take a look at what this actually um, looks like on the uh, camera system here. So let me kind of zoom in for this here. So I've actually got the part right now and we're going to use the program setting for uh, where this part is once the uh, camera moves back to its original position to it there. Let's do a recognition test and see what the lighting, you can see on this picture, you can see with the lighting a very clearly defined dotted line going around the outside of the uh, component body there, but the pads themselves have solid lines, which indicate that those are leads. Those are the metal parts. Now, I'm gonna tell you this right now, that this component does not necessarily look like this. In fact, we're using lighting systems, both shadow and direct lighting systems, where we're basically trying to dim the direct lighting down to where um, the white ceramic, which right now looks gray, looks gray. So if we were to increase the direct lighting to where we would traditionally be looking at a shiny metal lead on a black component body, and we were to do another recognition of this, that's actually what it looks like underneath traditional lighting. And so it's found the component body and it's kind of guessing as to where the leads are um, at this point, which ultimately it thinks that it's found and it's come back with an answer of 100% in terms of where this is. Now the Panasonic system actually has the ability to try and automatically find where the best lighting is for this. Let's see what happens if we run an automatic teaching me mechanism on this particular component. And it's going to cycle through, you can see the numbers that are on there, a whole, well, if I don't press the button with them, has a whole bunch of different settings that it says, I think I'm finding the right component parts for this here. And it says it thinks that that's actually the best place to where it can, can find uh, where these components are. And honestly, this may be something that it can actually use for being able to look at. Now, we're actually going to put this back to where we initially had 
where this component is, which is where we can see very clearly defined where these pads of metal and everything happen to be with that here, right? Um, and so now what we're going to do is actually save this teaching data. And we're going to test this teaching data by doing what's called a gap confirmed test. That gap confirmed test is where the component is going to move around on the camera system that's on the inside of this at its full placement and mounting speed for this component. And so what I'm going to do is kind of step this away just a little bit here. Whoops, I'm not going to zoom in so we can actually see where this is. Let's do a gap confirmed test. And you can see there's the pick and place head that's moving back and forth very, very quickly. And it's trying to recognize where that part is each and every time when it uh, uh, to make sure that it knows where it's located at before it puts it down. And we can see that according to what it's found here, there's been a minimal amount of movement on the actual uh, body itself. The uh, body is not shifting too much in X, Y and or polar theta. Now that it has come back with an answer of 100% every single time it has found that component. So our lighting mechanism works for it, but for sometimes for bright components, we have to do a little bit more in terms of programming where that component is actually going to be located at here. More to come from the Lorain County Community College MEMS Microelectronics Manufacturing Program, as well as Merit Manufacturing Electronics and Rework Institute for Training. If you'd like to see uh, an interesting video or something like that posted, uh, let us know down in the comments in the comments below. Let us know what you think about it here, and we will see you around on the next one, folks. Take care. Bye bye.